Launch number five is located at the West Martello Tower. Um, it would probably be easier to know that it's uh, just west of the White Street Pier. Um, right off of uh, Atlantic Boulevard is the street where you would park. Um, there's a, the West Martello Tower, which is kind of like an enclosed little fort. Right next to it is a man-made sand pit area there. Um, and then if you cross through that, there's a seawall and cut in those seawalls are basically steps down into the water. Um, that's kind of the launch. It's not the e most, the best, most accessible, but it is a decent launch. Uh, plenty of parking, easily accessible in regards to, um, that whole area there. Um, it is sand, um, bit soft sand, so you probably would need some wheels. It's good hundred feet from the parking to the water and then you do have those four or five concrete steps to get down to the water so not the, the easiest of launches I wouldn't utilize it myself on by myself uh, if you go to the other side of the West Martello Towers is basically the um, uh, another beach area there and uh, it's kind of a real popular beach area so I'm not sure you could launch out of there it's just you just kind of have to bypass a lot of people um, otherwise, uh, that area there is, uh, my predominant bait catching area and shore fishing area. Uh, I go there a lot for when the winds are blowing, um, and I want to do just a quick fish trip. I can walk on that, uh, seawall there and, uh, throw some, uh, top water stuff or some, uh, hard baits and catch, uh, snook, tarpon, jack, cravels, um, snappers. And that's year round, uh, which is nice. And whether, depending on the winds, even if it's blowing, that place is usually sheltered. Um, not the best place to launch, but a decent place for uh, to get in the water if you need to. Um, a lot of bait schools in that area there because of the, the pier there. So it builds up in that corner. So you'll see a lot of guys cast netting for uh, pilchards in that area there and the mullet. Launch number six is on the east side of the White Street Pier. And this is an actual, I think it was probably the old school, actual concrete boat launch back in the days. Um, the problem I think they had with it is that that area gets covered is with uh, silt and seaweed. So it's extremely shallow in that area because of all the silt buildup. Um, low tide, I can't even get my kayak off to the boat ramp without uh, dragging it a uh, pretty good distance out to the water before it'll float. Uh, but it is a solid uh, concrete boat ramp. There's um, a couple of parking stalls, where in the video you'll see where I park, but just in that area there's a couple of uh, public parking stalls and then a handicap parking up on the right next to the ramp. And then uh, across the street there's uh, available parking for about three, or three to four cars. And then you would have to go to uh, Stephen Avenue, which is just around the corner, and which is the residential area where there you would be able to park up on the side of the street. A little bit of a distance, but not horrible. Um, I do utilize that ramp because of the parking right next to the boat launch. It makes it easy. Um, generally what I do is that I'll go by that area. If there's a parking spot there, then I'll park and load and I'll launch from there. If it's no parking right in that immediate vicinity, then I'll go um, down the road a little bit farther to my next the next stop I'm going to tell you about. And uh, another area there, just like on the opposite side, it's a good bait area. Um, usually I'll be launching there and heading out to the reef, so I don't really fish in the immediate vicinity. Um, you, they catch quite a bit of uh, um, snapper grunts. Like I said, you'll see the tarpons around around the, the pier there because that's some good structure that sticks pretty far out. But uh, other than that, not the, the best fishing area there. But 
a decent launch to get you on the Atlantic side. Launch number seven is right off of Smathers Beach. Um, it's one of the log largest, longest uh, public beaches in the U.S. Another southern facing uh, part of the island. Uh, the launch area is to the extreme east. Basically at the end of the, uh, the beach area there um, is about the only real feasible launch area. What it is is that they created kind of a berm that runs the whole stretch. And in order to get to the ocean, you have to walk up five or six concrete steps to get to the top. And then on the other side is where the beach, sand and beach is, and that gets you to the water. So there's not really a good way to get your kayak from the uh, South Roosevelt Boulevard or Highway 1, A1A, right? Is where you off the uh, street park there or on street park there. Uh, however, if you do go to the far east where I've got it marked is there is a opening and the, the berm is no longer there they cut off the berm and then there's a driveway basically opening and what that's utilized for is the um, dumping when they they um, put the man-made sand and also when they rake up all the seaweed during the summertime they run the machinery through that in order to get onto the beach so you could park right at that entrance way there and then that makes you your basically 30 40 feet from the water um, it does go basically concrete uh, sidewalk has a little concrete driveway then you have that 20 30 feet of sand and then you're right there along the water line to enter on either side of a, uh, um, a break that they put in a man-made uh, rock wall break that they have sticking out into the water there um, so it's one of my favorite launches on the Atlantic side there because there's tons of traffic. Most of the tourists don't don't go to that far side because it's kind of a way where the concession sand is and all the rental areas and all the food places are on the opposite, on the west side of the beach there. So um, makes it uh, very easy to find a parking spot. Uh, the kite surfer guys usually park in that area there and do the same thing, launch out of there because it's easily accessible. They can carry their gear without having to go over that berm. Um, again, Atlantic access, not the best. There's a, it's a good mullet spot because it's the beach area, sandy area. So yeah, there's always schools of mullet running along the edge there. Um, you'll see guys going there in the evening and just trying to catch mullet. Um, and then for me it's just a launch off place and I head straight south to get to the reef and the wrecks. primarily inland Key West and it is running along a residential canal that cuts from east to west. Um, the boat launch is on the extreme west side of the canal so it's maybe a mile and a half to get out to the Cow Key Channel which is the channel that runs between Key West and Stock Island, the next island up and connects the Gulf of Mexico and the uh, Atlantic Ocean um, it's a public launch. It's a very nice, fairly newish type launch. Um, looks like they put some money into it. Uh, it's probably one of the nicer launches on Key West. Uh, makes it nice that there's a free launch, free parking. There's not a ton of parking, but it's a uh, anywhere along the streets fine. Uh, the actual cross streets is um, the major thoroughfare is Flagler Avenue and 11th Street is the close by um, street crossing but where you would take uh, 11th Street South and that road basically dead ends on the launch um, and then you could park anywhere on 11th Street or Riviera Drive which is a cross street that goes off of there and they do have a couple of built-in parking spots right next to, next to the launch which are for uh, boats and trailers but uh, 
and I think anybody can park anywhere around that area there. Um, it does not get a lot of boat traffic during the week, but um, nice weather weekends, holiday weekends, um, it it does get a bit busy because it is a internal launch that's a uh, fairly easy for residentials around that area there. Um, the negative part for the kayaking thing is that you would have to kayak about a, a mile and a half down a narrow canal, which is not the most scenic. It's interesting because of the um, the nice houses along the, the canal there. Um, there's a nice little uh, mangrove part that you can cut through with a little bit of tunnels, which is nice. But even once you make it out to that Couchy Key Channel, like I said, you're still in the middle of nowhere. You still either have to head north or you have to head south and go pretty long distance to actually get in any reasonable fishable areas there. So i um, done it a couple of times, but like I said, it was I usually mainly used it for as just a place to get in the water to paddle and just kind of check out something different. Launch number nine is in QS would probably be most known as is the Charter Boat Row. Um, it's located on North Roosevelt Boulevard and First Street, or if you put North Roosevelt Boulevard and Palm Avenue Causeway would be the intersection as the, the streets change names right there. But most people around know it as Charter, Charter Boat Row um, or in the Garrison Bight. Um, what it is is an actual city run um, public launch and as well as they have a boat storage access there um, they it is a fee for launching and parking uh, they charge ten dollars to utilize the boat launch I believe that includes when I last time I talked to them about it it was that ten dollars if you car talked your kayak would be included with one parking spot however if you utilize a trailer it's ten dollars to launch and ten dollars to park uh, a vehicle and trailer is how it works um, standard heavy duty I think it's probably a two uh, width double width uh, boat launch there um, full on parking no problems um, again it's another one where it's more in central Key West so to get out anywhere you have to go pretty long distance just getting out of that uh, little charred boat row area you'd have to go out you pass under the Palm Avenue Causeway Bridge um, that gets you into the Garrison Bay area then if you go a little bit to the northeast there's a little cut that separates the um, the military housing and then the Hilton Haven uh, Arrow Trumbo Point area and once you get through that cut that then gets you out towards the kind of the uh, the Gulf side but you're still surrounded by keys which is Fleming Key and Dredger's Key so you're still kind of <laughs> surrounded by islands so you're really still not in, in a, a reasonably very good uh, fishing zone and that area as well gets heavily trafficked by boats a lot of jet skis, a lot of flats boats, a lot of uh, people cruising along the north side channels there. So it's more of a thoroughfare than it is a fishing area. If you head out northwise about three, four miles, then you get into the nicer flats and then you get the keys that are out right at the border of the uh, Gulf of Mexico waters there. Um, and then if you headed up and then to the west, that gets you into the uh, the Northwest Channel, the harbor, and so forth. But you're, like I said, you're talking three, four miles just to get out of the the Key West Enclave Islands. There's Keys, so not the most popular launch. Um, I live right, real close by to it, but I've really never utilized it because not really a point when you have to go that far out. But if you need something easily accessible. Um, you need to store something, um, or if you have a boat, that's a good parking spot for it, place for it.